how to use the new iPhone migration tool in iOS 12.4. Thanks for watching 9to5Mac. Be sure to thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. Up until now, when setting up a new iPhone, you had several options. You could restore from an iCloud backup, restore from an iTunes backup, move data from Android, or not transfer any apps or data at all and start off with a fresh, clean installation. But with the release of iOS 12.4, new iPhone migration tool set is now here. And the whole point of the iPhone migration tool is to allow you to migrate all of your data from one iPhone to another iPhone. And obviously this is especially handy when setting up a brand new device. So Apple has a document outlining all the steps involved. And they also note that you can use a wired connection by using the lightning to USB 3 camera adapter along with the lightning to USB cable. We'll talk about that in just a second. Now the iPhone migration tool is sort of an extension to the quick start functionality that was first revealed in iOS 11. This allows you to set up a new iPhone. For instance, here's a new iPhone that I have. Quick start allows you to migrate all the settings from one iPhone to the other. But now with this new migration tool, you can not only migrate all the settings over, but all of the data as well. Now you're probably thinking, why not just use an iCloud backup and restore from that backup? Well, number one, not everyone uses iCloud or can afford iCloud storage space. And then number two, not everyone has the type of internet connection available at the time to facilitate some of the larger iCloud backup data restores. So the iPhone migration tool with this direct peer-to-peer -peer connectivity allows you to work around those issues. Now I mentioned earlier how you could use a lightning to USB 3 camera adapter along with a lightning cable to create a wired connection between two iPhones to facilitate migration. Now this is a $39 adapter so I don't recommend that everyone just go out and get one of these because you're probably not performing migrations all that often and I find that the wireless peer-to-peer -peer connection is fast enough. But if you want to create a wired connection, you'll need the camera adapter along with the extra lightning to USB cable, plug that into the USB port, and now you have a makeshift cable of sorts with two lightning connections on the end. First of all, I'm going to show you how the wireless connection works using the migration tool. I'm going to walk you through this. So first of all, you need to invoke quick start. So that's what we're going to do. So on your new iPhone, you'll see the quick start menu. And then on the existing iPhone, the existing installation, you should see the little pop-up to set up a new iPhone. So you just tap on continue there, make sure the devices are close together. And then you want to use your iPhone's camera to scan the pattern inside the circle into your passcode when prompted, and that will initiate the quick start setup. So first of all, if you have a Face ID enabled device, it's going to ask you to set that up. I'm going to choose set up later in settings. And here is the new transfer your data menu. So this includes all the existing methods for transferring data, whether that be iCloud backups or uh, iTunes backups. But at the very top, you see the transfer from iPhone. That's the new data migration tool that we're going to use. So I tap that, go through all the little prompts there and then it just starts transferring data wirelessly over a local Wi-Fi and Bluetooth peer-to-peer -peer connection. And you're gonna to wanna to keep the devices as close together as possible so you get the best transfer rate and it doesn't time out on you because you will get an error message if the phones are too far apart. Now, Apple also suggests on this screen that you keep your devices connected to power, uh, especially for those extra long migrations. But as you can see, that isn't strictly enforced, at least at the power level of the iPhone that I'm migrating my data to. So the amount of time it takes obviously depends on how much data it's migrating over. If you have a phone that you've been using for years and you're migrating data over, obviously that may take a little longer. Once the migration is completed, you'll see this message on the original iPhone. You just tap continue and you can go about using that or restoring it to factory defaults if you're gonna sell it or whatever the case may be. Now on the new phone, you're gonna see the Apple menu after it reboots. Now once you get back to the home screen, you will notice that you do need an internet connection to download or re-download all of your applications that have been migrated over. This is because of app thinning and each device getting its own unique binaries when it comes to app store downloads. So you will still need a competent internet connection to complete the migration in full, but at least the data portion of the migration is already taken care of. 
Now, we already mentioned how you could use a wired connection, or at least Apple advertises the fact that you can use a wired connection. What's kind of odd is that there really isn't any sort of visual indicator that it's using the wired connection, at least from what I could tell. If you guys notice something different, please let me know down below in the comments. It's nice because that USB 3 camera adapter does allow you to charge both devices simultaneously. And that can be helpful if you have a really large amount of data migrating over. So you have a 512 gigabyte iPhone 10s Max and you're migrating over to a new iPhone 11 once, once that comes out. And it's also 512 gigabytes. That's a lot of data to move over and it's nice to keep your device charged up. But as I noted at the outset, I didn't really notice any sort of speed improvements by using a wired connection. In fact, it seemed a little bit slower than a wireless connection, but that said, I have done this migration probably a dozen times today, and each time it seems to, to vary as to how long it takes. Now remember, the legacy options are still there on the transfer your data page. So if you want to restore from iCloud, you just tap download from iCloud, choose your backup, and you can restore using that backup. Just remember that that's going to use more data if your backups are large, and obviously you're going to need enough iCloud storage space to house the backup. Now you'll notice an other options button at the bottom of the transfer your data page, and that just basically brings back the old apps and data menu for restoring from iCloud backup, iTunes backup, moving data from Android, or setting up as a brand new device by not transferring over any apps or data. Now, if you select other options, keep in mind that's going to basically lock you out of the iPhone migration tool. So you'll have to perform a reset of the iPhone setup process in order to gain access again to the iPhone migration tool. What have you noticed about the new iPhone migration in iOS 12.4? Also share your thoughts down below in the comments as well. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.